I know I said in my previous video that FreeBSD was my operating system of choice, but now I completely disavow the usage of FreeBSD. I do not like FreeBSD anymore. I was, I don't know, maybe I was just under some kind of spell or something, but any like positive thing I saw about FreeBSD turned out to have five negatives behind it. So today I'm going to be talking very briefly about why I don't like FreeBSD anymore. Uh, I think I'm start. I'm going to start posting videos on Monday and Thursday. I put out a poll um, on the community tab. Check that out, um, and you can vote for whatever the second day I'm going to post on is. Uh, I'm definitely posting Monday, but you can pick a different day. So let's get on with the FreeBSD video. So the first thing about FreeBSD is that it is not minimal. Now I installed OpenBSD back in July, and at just normal sitting at on my DWM build with a couple daemons running in the background but with like the X server and whatnot running no terminals open or anything you know I can usually average 70 to 80 megabytes of RAM usage at idle now that I have like more daemons and processes running back in, in the background you know maybe it'll go up to like 90 but it never even reaches 100 if it's at idle if I open up a couple terminals you know like 120 or so but it's usually very small However, with FreeBSD, sometimes, and this is just on boot, I would see 300 megabytes at idle, and even if I only have a couple terminals open, it's jacking up to like five, 600 sometimes, which is quite frankly insane, because then I'll check HTOP, and I have no idea what's actually using that much memory, so I'm not sure what was going on there. But sometimes, I would actually close, I would terminate every single application or program that's running, and it would have 1.1 gigabytes of RAM usage for no reason. I would check HTOP, nothing's actually consuming that much RAM, but it's reporting that it's taking up that much. I have no idea what could have possibly been going on there. Maybe it was just bugs or something, but it was crazy. So that was the first reason that I did not want to use FreeBSD anymore. The second is that the graphics drivers and whatnot, it's very, it's a bit of a hacky system and I kept getting problems where it said like kernel mismatch and the drivers just were not working. Eventually uh, it got to the point where I literally could not start my X server. And then when I did start my X server, I couldn't change the resolution to anything beyond, I think it was like 1024 by 768, which is not like a normal resolution. My ThinkPad is 1600 by 900, which it's a little weird that it could not go to that. And it kept telling me that there was some kind of error and I kept looking up errors and I looked at my D message and all of that stuff and I could not find an actual solution. I tried recompiling the drivers from the porch tree and I tried updating my kernel, I tried recompiling the kernel from scratch, none of it changed anything. And so at that point I, I just went back to OpenBSD because I was like, I'm not a graphics kind of guy and anytime there's like a big like break with something like graphics or sound, I won't always reinstall. I'll try my hardest to fix it, but if I've spent like at least two hours on a problem straight and I haven't fixed it, I usually just give up, back up my home directory, reinstall the OS, and it's fine because I have all my dot files online and everything's very portable. So I don't really have to worry about that kind of stuff. I can just deploy all my stuff on a new machine. And the next point I have is that the documentation um, I would say it's not as complete. On OpenBSD, if there is an issue with the documentation, it's treated as if it's like a zero-day vulnerability in the kernel. Like that's, that's how important documentation is to the OpenBSD developers. However, with FreeBSD, I found inconsistencies or things that were from old versions or things that weren't supported anymore or things that were just simply missing. Now, am I going to go in and commit those changes? No, because I'm not a free BSD user anymore. Plus, they probably wouldn't like what I have to say outside of any sort of programming stuff anyway. And that is because they have a code of conduct, and that is my next point. I don't like code of conduct things, or codes of conduct, whatever. I don't really know what the plural for code of conduct is. Regardless, I probably have a video coming about why I don't like codes of conduct, but you can also go on my blog, link in the description, to see my one of my very first posts on my blog ever, actually, about why I don't like codes of conduct. But they have a code of conduct, and I'm not sure if it has any sort of limitations on what you're allowed to say outside of like what your actual commit is doing. But for some reason, I just get a feeling that the FreeBSD community would not like the kinds of things that I 
you know, the kinds of opinions and values and beliefs that I hold, let's just say. The next reason why I don't like FreeBSD is that the package manager, though it is actually faster than the OpenBSD package manager, I guess in recent updates or maybe my internet speed just increased, the package manager got a lot faster. So the OpenBSD package manager, I actually kind of prefer it now because it actually does what I want it to do. The FreeBSD package manager does not. I don't really want to get into like all the intricacies and stuff, but I would tell the FreeBSD package manager to do something and then I would have to look up how to do the actual thing because it wasn't obvious. I look at the man page briefly, couldn't figure it out, just wasn't doing what I wanted to do. So that was one of my problems with it. And I actually had another problem with some packages where I'd get the binary version of it and it would not be the same program, well I guess it would be the same program, but it wouldn't have like the same compiler options as you would get from compiling it from the, uh, the porch tree. I don't remember which package it was, but I'm pretty sure, um, actually I'm not going to say anything that's not true, so let's just continue on. And let's talk about the porch tree actually since I've got myself on it. With OpenBSD ports, if you look at my ports repository, you can see it's actually very easy to port software to OpenBSD. And actually one of my most popular videos is about porting software to OpenBSD. That's how easy it is. It's not that long of a video. So if you want to port software to OpenBSD, very easy. Notice I didn't make a video about porting FreeBSD software and this is because the ports uh, process is actually like a lot more complicated, less user friendly, and much less documented. You can go into a terminal and type in manbsd.port.mk on OpenBSD and you will find a lot of information. You'll find all the different configuration options and variables and a lot of like special use cases with FreeBSD. Well, you have to include bsd.port.mk when you make a port. However, there's no man page for it. So you have to go through, I think you have to type man eight ports and you have to look through that. But even then, it doesn't have nearly the same amount of documentation as the OpenBSD port system has, which I find to be honestly a little bit uh, lacking. I think that they should probably get a better um, porting, I guess, handbook. I mean, I know OpenBSD's ports handbook is kind of like well known for being really good and I, I just didn't see the same thing on FreeBSD. So that's all my complaints about FreeBSD. Um, it's not many, but it was enough to get me to switch back to OpenBSD. I like OpenBSD. Oh, actually, I have one more thing to say about FreeBSD. Um, the feature about being able to run Linux binaries on uh, FreeBSD, I'm sure it's probably good, but if anything is statically linked, you have to run it inside a chart, which most Linux distributions at a base level they're gonna be like five six hundred megabytes but then as soon as you start installing anything they're gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger and when you have limited storage space on a laptop it's not very convenient so I'd rather just run a Linux distribution if I want a like Linux binary to run like if I wanted to use Linux software I would use Linux so I don't even see that as a positive for FreeBSD anymore anyways that's all I have to say about FreeBSD I don't like it and I don't endorse its usage. I'm going to put the link of this into the description of my Linux versus OpenBSD versus FreeBSD video. And yep, yeah, that's all I have to say. Good night.